So Osiris Torrance is a newest member of the Buffalo Bills. What a selection for Buffalo. What a job to get him, I think, because I think he's really good. I had him. So I think a big part of why he fell out of the first round was because he's a guard and people don't tend to value guards as highly. They want someone who is a tackle or at least they feel has potential to be a tackle. Osiris Torrance was just never going to play tackle. That's just not something that he, you know, he's playing guard in college. You're not going to move that to a tackle in uh, the NFL. Not how that works. So you're getting a guard here, but the reality is guards are really important. Guards are, again, I've talked about this before, but there isn't evidence to support that tackles are more valuable than guards in terms of helping you win football games because there's plenty of work that important work that guards do. And if you're of that belief that I am, that guards are just as important, you probably have Osiris Torrance a lot higher on your big board than where he ended up going. Again, on the consensus big board, he still wasn't overly high. He was at 32, which in this draft uh, would be a, sec a, a second round pick. It would be the first second round pick though so why did he fall so far in the draft is I think a, a reasonable question to ask I I think that there are some potential uh concerns to have with him some criticisms that I think are are somewhat reasonable with Torrance uh but not many to be honest I thought he was a pretty can't miss prospect I, I'm surprised I, I don't know if he's uh as quick as some other guys. I'll say that. Not as fast. And I'm wondering if people are a little concerned about if you get these fast interior defensive linemen, will he struggle a little bit? There's some potential for that to happen. But, I mean, he handled his own against Jalen Carter in college. Like, I wouldn't be that concerned about it. I really wouldn't. I think he's really good. And I think the Bills got an absolute steal here with the selection. I don't get exactly why he fell as far as he did. It doesn't make a ton of a ton of sense to me. It just doesn't. So uh, that's kind of how I view that. And again, you know me. What do I care about when we uh, it comes to offensive linemen? I care about production, and we're going to get into that in just a second. We'll get into the film and all that stuff. He has production, and that's what I like. Um, for the Bills, what does this mean for their offensive line? It was kind of an underrated issue, I thought. Uh, you know, listen, Mitch Morse at center, okay, he's fine. Um, I, I don't know. Uh, the current guys on the roster uh, that you would look at at the guard position, Connor McGovern, Ryan Bates, not necessarily guys you would love to start the season with. I think he'd be an immediate upgrade over either one of those two players. Uh, and then, you know, again, the tackle situation, Why I like Dean Dawkins, uh, David Quisenberry and Spencer Brown, both on the roster. Will either of them have a good next year? I don't know. It remains to be seen. But uh, I think this is a really good pick. And again, it's value here. Which player this late in the draft are you getting that you feel comfortable starting the reality is it's really only Osiris Torrance, I think, that's really left on the, the board. I mean, I'm looking at my big board right now, and uh, there's only uh, a couple players. I believe Hennon Hooker is actually the only guy uh, on my list uh, that I had a first-round grade on that's still available now. So getting, and obviously they don't need him, so getting the next best player on the board, I think it's a great win. But yeah. I love the pick, but let me talk about now the player himself. So this is his pro football focus page, and you see that, again, this is something that matters. This is something to pay attention to with offensive linemen, as guys of good PFF grades at this position tend to be good NFL players, and his grades are good, and we have a sample size of two straight years now of him having a grade over 88. I guess technically it wasn't over 88 in 2022, it was exactly 88, but you get the idea. Uh, really good run block grade, pass block grade, not quite quite as good but again he's a guard you care about the run block grade a little bit more in that scenario so it's not the end of the world the only real knock you have statistically on him would be the true pass set pass block grade which is a little bit lower at 64.2 maybe that's the one area of weakness for him that he could improve upon and that's probably his biggest knock statistically so stats very good you can't only base offensive linemen on stats you still have to watch the film of course so let's watch some film first let's start off with this play and you see that you know uh it's, it's a one-on-one -on -one matchup right here and it's not just any one-on-one -on -one matchup this is going up against Jalen Carter Jalen Carter the guy many people have as the best player in the draft uh, that's not a quarterback plenty of people feel that way so him uh you know if you can make this block you feel pretty good about it this is a big time block for him right when this play begins you see Jalen Carter is so good with his hands it's not so easy to just get the hand placement that you want he's able to kind of get to the side and now Torrance can't get his right arm all the way around like he typically likes to it's not on the right uh, the left side 
of uh, Carter, uh, which would be towards the right of the screen. This is good work from Carter, but watch how Torrance comes back here. Torrance is still strong enough, he is able to shove Carter towards the side and make sure he helps protect his quarterback, and these are the kind of things he really does consistently, I would say. He did not get beat too often, even when he was going up against tough competition, he did a very good job at still being able to just win his one-on-one -on -one matchups, and again, for offensive linemen, it's less about the highlights and more about the consistency, and he was very consistent. Heading over to this play, one of the things I have to say, this isn't something that gets talked about too frequently with offensive linemen, but I I think he's a really high IQ player. Like I was blown away sometimes by some of these blitz pickups that he was able to pull off. He's a really good uh, smart player who just understands how to make things work. So this play, for example, the way it's working on paper is that uh, Torrance actually has a little bit of help here. The center is going to be blocking in his direction. However, this play is not so simple. It is not just a four-man rush like they're prepared to block for. As you see, that player is going to be rushing in as well and trying to get to the quarterback. So it's a five-man rush instead of a four-man rush, and it's in Torrance's direction. Right when this play begins, you, I do think that what's incredible about this is how quick Torrance reads this play. He quickly realizes, oh, my center, you know, I can't uh, just go over and make sure that I block the guy who I was originally going to block. I have my center helping me out there, so he understands the situation, knows that his center is leaning in that direction, and he does have help, and knows that he has to pick up the blitzing linebacker. As you see, he does exactly that. Now, uh, his center next to him didn't quite do as good of a job at uh, reading the play, uh, which still kind of created a pressure, but still, this is exactly what you want to see out of someone like Torrance, is to be able to pull off uh, something like that which he was able to do and also something like this a great example where again he is going to have some help on this play but still double teaming an interior defensive lineman right here that's what he's doing again he is obviously the guard on this play and once again this is not just any interior defensive lineman this is once again Jalen Carter who Torrance is going up against and watch what's going to happen Right when this play begins, you see that Torrance is able to, you know, again, with some help, get the leverage he wants to. But really, this is Torrance right here who's in position, and watch what he's able to do. I mean, watch him really just uh, kind of stop Carter in his tracks. Carter is not able to get over there at all to help make the play. Just really good stuff from Osiris Torrance, and these are the kind of things that he is consistently capable of. So, again, he did this against really good competition uh, in Georgia. He did it against tough, uh, bad competition, too. I mean, he dominated bad competition, and he survived good competition, which is what you want to see for a good prospect. I really like him a lot, and I think that people, uh, you know, again, a lot of people view, oh, well, you're just a guard, so how much value is there in that? A lot of analytics I've seen suggest that guards are just as valuable as tackles, and it's a really undervalued position. So if you can get an elite guard or someone who you think can just be a really good guard, it's totally worth uh, you know, uh, a quality pick. So at least that's how I view it. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.